Thank you for being here, folks. I really appreciate so much everybody being here, coming out. And uh, the visitors, thank you for being here. For your first-time visitors, please don't make it you last. Uh, but uh, please get signed in if you'd like to. And we'll send you or give you a little gift uh, for taking time to come by and be with us this morning. If you'll turn with me, we will start. We'll get down to the text just in a couple minutes. But today we're going to be talking about homesick. I don't know if you've ever been homesick or not, but uh, I know Barbara's not. She don't want ever want to see snow again. Uh, we're hoping anyway. I told her last week that been all the roads to Indiana had been closed, and she's going to have to stay here for two more years. So, uh, but we're glad to have you down with us. But from time to time, we all get homesick. Amen. I remember when I was in the sixth grade class in Athens, Tennessee at Forest Hill Elementary School. My uh, teacher was Miss Kimbrough and the county signed some kind of a deal with, with the parks and recreations things and they took every school out of the sixth grade class from each one of the elementary schools and we all went to this camp for four days. Now that guy in front look familiar to you? He don't to me. I've never seen him before. <laughs> but let me tell you, if you thought that I may not fit in to be an outdoorsman, if you thought that I wouldn't fit in to roughing it in the woods, you thought right. Uh, if you had seen me during those four days, it would have definitely confirmed your suspicions that I don't need to be outdoors. I, I, didn't, I didn't do well at the tug of rope. I, I did worse at the canoeing trip. Uh, then, then they did the explore the caves, and I was definitely out on that. And I couldn't build a fire at night. I thought the way you build a fire is you take a five-gallon can of gas and pour it on some sticks, and they wouldn't let us do that. Uh, but now that will work. I'll, let me let me assure you, you'll get a fire going with that. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yeah, that's why you work. That's why you do it. The bigger fire, the bigger can of gas. I understand that. But I just did not have fun those four days in camp. During those four days, it was probably the first time that I had been, especially overnight for more than one or two nights, away from my family. And I had a lot of my friends there, but it just wasn't home. It wasn't my bed. It wasn't my routine. It wasn't what I wanted to do. Can I just tell you, I was pretty well homesick. I wasn't homesick for the neighborhood, for the old house we lived in. None of that didn't amount a whole lot to me, but I was just homesick for my routine. You know, we had a guy visiting the house uh, a few weeks ago. He said, I've got to go. And I said, well, what's your hurry? He says, I need to use the bathroom. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, we're, we, we have plumbing and everything. No. <laughs> my bathroom sometimes we get homesick for the craziest things amen i want to talk to you this morning about being homesick for heaven now on the screen he's going to put second corinthians chapter five in the king james version i'm going to be reading just a couple of words different out of the new king james but if you're able physically able please stand to honor the reading of god's word And we'll start reading 2 Corinthians chapter 5, starting with verse 1. For we know, everybody ready? Everybody ready? Amen. For we know that if our earthly house, the New King James says is earthly tent, and I like the way it's described as a tent, were dissolved, we would have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, it's talking about in this body, we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our house, which is from heaven. If indeed we have been clothed, and if you look at that clothed up, you'll come to find out that lines up with being clothed by putting on the full armor of God. If we're clothed, we shall not be found naked. Number four, for we that are in this earthly tent do groan, be burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality, that death may be swallowed up by life. 
Not he, now he that is prepared for us, self same thing as God, who also hath given us unto us the earnest power of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home, in other words, while we're comfortable in this body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Anybody in here would rather be out of this body and present with the Lord. Amen. Would you not rather trade all the troubles that we're going through with, all the things that's happening, all, everything that's going on, would we not rather be absent from the body and present with the Lord? Amen. Number nine, wherefore we labor, in other words, we work hard that we are present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Verse 10 lines up with Hebrews 8, 13. Uh, we use that a lot around here. We believe that the way you live this life is going to determine where you're going to spend eternity. Verse number 10 backs that up. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things they done in this body or in this tent according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for the word of God. Lord, we thank you for hungry hearts. We thank you, God, for a longing in our soul, God, to go on and be with you in glory. Lord, we pray you'll touch each and every one that's here. Anoint our pastor today. Lord, let the word of God come from him, Lord, and let us receive it. Lord, that anybody that's here that doesn't know you, Lord, let them receive it, that they too might rejoice in the hope that we have in Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I am sure we all get homesick from time to time. But I want to go back and touch on the scripture there in verse number one. As Paul was talking about this body being a temporary vessel. If you run scriptures to back there, the word tent used in the New King James Version, I think is very accurate of what it's talking about. This body is compared to a tent, a temporary dwelling. Now, I don't know if you've ever been camping or not. Diane decided that she wanted to go camping one time with the boys was, I don't know, there's an elementary school somewhere or another, and she's talking about all this fun that her family used to have when they get a tent and go out in the woods camping. Well, we followed that suit, Brother Ed. We went and bought a tent. We went out to the woods, but that's where it ended. We did not have fun. It rained. It was mud. It was water running up under the tent. And along about midnight, I decided that I had a house much better than this, just a few miles away. And this tent camping wasn't for me. So uh, I did not do very well out in the roughing it in the woods. But Paul says this body is like a tent. It's temporary. It is not what we have. To, it's not the end of the journey, but it's the beginning of the journey. Camping may be fun for a while. A lot of you like to go camping. I understand that. We went from a pop from a tent, then we bought that pop up camper, which is nothing more than a tent on wheels. <laughs> We didn't like that either. Then we went and bought one that we pulled behind the car, and uh, that, that, that worked somewhat better. At least you had a little bit of protection around you, but it still wasn't my ideal of camping. Let me tell you, my ideal of camping is a 45-foot diesel pusher with three slide outs on a satellite dish, okay? <laughs> now, that's, now that's my idea of camping, okay? Uh, but I'm just not into the going out in the woods and the tent and building fires and, and uh, go gathering berries, and I, 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 that, that's just not me, okay? Uh, this body is a temporary dwelling. And what Paul is trying to say to us, I do believe, is don't get accustomed to what you have now. The world that we have, this body that we're living in, is not the final portion of the journey. This is not what it's going to be like. If we compare heaven to earth, this is the roughing it out in the woods in a tent compared to what we're going to have when we get there. You know, instead of the mud and the, the, the weeds and the snakes and everything that goes along with 
with the tent camping. Honey, let me tell you, I'm going to trade that for streets of gold any day. I'm going to trade that old tent, that, old, that a canvas tent that don't suit well with me. What I'd rather have is a mansion that God prepared especially for me. And there used to be an old song that some of you probably heard of that said, just build me a cabin in the corner of glory land. Honey, there's not a scripture in the Bible that backs that up. There's nothing nowhere through the Bible that you can find that God is going to build a cabin in the corner of glory land. It's either that you are going to make it or you are not. There's not going to be any halfways and if you make it honey you're not going to have to stay in the corner of glory land. You're going to have a, a mansion that has been especially built and down the streets in front of that mansion it's going to be streets of purest gold and honey you say you don't like it loud here heaven may not be too good for you either there because they're going to be praising they're going to be people lifting their hands they're going to be people shouting the streets of glory as reunions come back honey it's going to be a homecoming like you've never seen Amen. come on if you're going to give the Lord praise give me, give me praise this morning The tent is a temporary. The flesh that we have is not very durable. It is a weak structure. And, a lot of, and we find in the scripture it tells us that the spirit is strong, but the flesh is weak. The flesh is what gives us the problem. The flesh wears out easily. Always, always something wrong with this body. And the older we get, the more doctors we get to know. Can anybody say amen? There's something that's going wrong. It's the eyes. It's the ears. It's the throat. It's the back. It's the foot. There's something going on. The body leaks in places it should and what should flow don't. The more we leak, the more we grow old, the more things we can find that goes wrong with this body. Honey, let me tell you, this body is planned obsolescence. It was designed to fail. It was designed to go away. This was not supposed to be what we live in forever. It's not what we're supposed to have as a reward for serving him. It's because what we do in this body while we're here to serve him in spite of everything that we go through with, what gives us the authority and the privilege to be in with him when we get to be in heaven. <clears throat> Our tent will get old. Nobody said amen. amen. <laughs> Our tent will start to deteriorate. Yeah. Our tent will leak and break apart. Our tent cannot handle the weather like it used to. Amen? amen. amen. The appearance of our tent will change. Amen. Right. My tent looks like it needs ironing. <laughs> there are wrinkles that I didn't used to have. My tent is changing its appearance. My hair. My wife told me this morning, she said, Honey, I didn't realize your hair was getting so thin. <laughs> Fortunately, she's only this tall. If she could see the top of it, it would really look thin. Amen. What don't turn loose turns colors. <laughs> it just happens. It happens. Some people say that God should have done a better job when he built this body. Some people say that if God was all that perfect one, why could he not build a perfect body? Honey, let me tell you something. God did build a perfect body. God is perfection. But the thing that we're living in now is not what we're going to have Amen. when we get there. Amen. The Bible is very clear to tell us that but we don't know what our new body will be made out of. They tell us we don't know what the skin, what the flesh, what the holder of our spirit will be when we get there. But I do like the part that says that we will be like him. Amen. 
whatever that he has, it's okay with me. If it's made out of uh, Walmart bags, it's all right with me. Whatever that God has is okay because I'm going to look like him. I'm going to be made out of what he has. You see, he has already gone through the death process that we are going to go through. The Bible tells us it's appointed unto man once to die. And then after that, it's the judgment. We are going to go by the way of death. Now, what about the rapture, pastor? What if the rapture just comes? Well, the flesh is still going to die. The flesh is not going. There's a Bible scripture that says, for we know that flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Honey, the flesh is not going. The only thing is going is our spirit, our soul. And when we get there, it's going to be encompassed with something, but I don't know what, and I don't care what. My main thing is I want to be there. I'm homesick for heaven. I've held the hands of people on their bedside. I've walked into the ICU rooms and prayed with people when they said that he's got hours or days to be here. I've heard the prayers of many people that says, God, why don't you just take me on home? God, why don't you just go ahead and let me end this life and, and go home to be with you? And people sometimes scratch their head and say, why would you want to leave here? Because here is nothing but trouble. Here is sorrow. Here is sadness. Here we, we're dominated by the government's rules and their laws that's infringing upon our rights. And as we see things that's developing more and more, the expression of church is going to be happening. The suppression of able to praise God freely is looks like it's on the horizon. But folks, let me tell you something. We cannot give up. We cannot step down. We have got to stand up strong and we have got to say, I'm homesick for heaven, but while I'm here, I'm going to do everything that I can. That's right. Amen. Would you rather have dirt ground or streets of gold would you rather have a temporary short painful life or you want eternal bliss all of these choices are yours you get to decide where you want to spend eternity with God has made some things abundantly clear and abundantly clear that your soul will never somebody say never. never you didn't get it somebody say never, never. your soul will never never die it will ever forever and ever be the person when God breathes the breath of life into you that soul will never never die but your choice of where you want to spend eternity is your choice if you read the book of Ezekiel you'll find many people many examples of where people started out trusting God you'll find where people that their sons or their fathers were served of God but then something happened they turned their back they turned away they turned away from God's way and it's very clear honey it's your decision where you're going to spend but if you plan to be in heaven you have got to live a life here on earth of upholding the standards of God Amen. you have got to hang on in other words you need to be homesick for heaven we lived in Chattanooga for 17 years we had a beautiful house, a great lot. It was just absolutely gorgeous. It had steps everywhere you go, but anyway, we had to move from there. Do you know why we had to move from there? Because it was God's plan. We had fulfilled what we were supposed to do there, and we never wanted to leave. But it was God's plan, and the doors just started opening. Things began to happen. We said, well, if we sell our house here, then we could move. Boom. Within 45 or 50 days from the time that we put the house on the market, the house sold. The one directly in front of us, straight across from us, had been on the market for over a year 
Let me tell you something. God can make things happen when it needs to be, but you have got to be a willing vessel. We came to Ocala. Well, why did you go there? Because that's where God needed us to be for us to grow spiritually, for us to grow in the word, for us to fulfill some things necessary before he could bring us down here for you folks. And let me tell you, I was so pleased and we're still tremendously happy of the people that we have get to meet here. Some of the most wonderful people in the world is right here at the Nocatee Church of God and I'm so thrilled to be your pastor. We are we excited of dying. I was talking this week is that Ocala is nice but honey, let's just get back home. Whatever we need to do, we just got to get back home. When we're gone for a couple days, it just don't feel right. It feels like we need to get back. Why in the world is that? But for some crazy reason, I don't know what it is, but we like you. <laughs> I don't know. I'm homesick for the fellowship. I'm homesick for what God is going to do. I'm homesick to see more people start serving God. I'm homesick for the revival that's gonna be breaking out and we're seeing souls saved in this community reaching out for God. I'm homesick for what he can do and what he's going to do if we will do our part, if we'll get on our knees, if we will serve him. He said he would bring every, all men unto him. Amen. We need to do our part. 1 Corinthians 3, starting in verse number 6. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God is the one that gives the increase. Amen. Honey, it takes somebody to preach the word. It takes somebody to make the telephone calls. It takes somebody to mail out the bulletins. It takes somebody to go knock on the doors. It takes every one of us to come together in unity and praise and worship to God. But he is the one that's going to pour out the increase. He is the one. If you look around here, you keep seeing new faces. I heard someone say this morning, well, there, there, there's more new people. And I said, don't get surprised. They're more on the way. There's more on the way. Folks, let me tell you something. As long as we are upholding the word of God, as long as we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, God is going to keep doing what he's supposed to do. Somebody say amen. Praise the Lord. John, the 12th chapter, the 32nd verse, God says, and if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. Honey, let me tell you something. We need to get into the business of being homesick about there so much that we think about it daily. Every hour we wonder, is this the right hour? Is this the hour that God is coming back? Who's ready? Who in my family can I call? Who can I talk to in my family? Who in my neighborhood is going to hell if God come back right now. We need to be so concerned about what is going to happen that we absolutely get upset about it in the body. Our flesh needs to get turmoil. We need to stand up for what God is wanting us to do and we need to get off our duffs and get ready to go to work and do it. The more that we do for him, the more that he is going to do for us. We cannot outgive God in money. We cannot outgive God in blessings. We cannot doubt give God in the spiritual things. He is the master and he controls the Bible and he will open up the windows and pour out a blessing that you cannot receive. I know a lot of people think that is money but honey let me tell you God controls the healing. God controls the spirituality. God controls the lifeline. God is absolutely in control of everything and he will diligently reward those who seek him. Amen. Well, Pastor, how do you know? How do you know that that's what God's plan for me is? 
Let me tell you something. When you said, God, here's my life. God, I want you to erase all the things that's happened in my life before. All the sins that I have committed. The Bible says that he will put those into the sea of forgetfulness. He will never, he will never remember those sins no more. When you start serving God, Keith, the devil's going to knock on your door and say, come on, Keith, you remember when we used to go do this, when we used to go do that. Boy, didn't we have a great time. The devil is going to tempt you, try to drag you back down because the devil does not want you to go to heaven. The devil wants you to be with him in hell. But let me tell you something. The Bible says that God will not allow more to be put on you than what you can bear. You cannot have to submit unto the devil but if you'll give your life submit your life unto God then you can resist the devil and the devil will have to flee but honey we have got to stand up for God we got to obey God's plans Jeremiah 29 11 the Bible says God had a plan for your life before you was ever even formed in your mama's tummy Amen. well pastor what does that mean that means that God created you to worship him. The Bible said it is not his will that any should perish. Folks, he designed you to praise God. He designed you to be one of those folks that's one of those Jesus fanatics. He designed you to every day worship his name and call praise upon his glory and his honor that he's doing. That's his plan for us. It's our plan that we will endure this earthly tent. We will get rid of all the things that's holding us down. This, this jail cell that's holding the spirit captive. One day the door is going to swing open and the spirit is going to be able to escape the body. And honey, according to the way I read the word, is absent from the body, is present with the Lord. And one of these days, I'm going to shut my eyes in death to this life, but I'm going to open my eyes to a brand new sight that I've never seen, Brother Steve. I can't imagine what it's going to look like as I look down the streets of glory. I can't imagine all the saints of old that I've read about time and time again in the Bible that's going to be walking down the streets that you can go up and talk to. I can't imagine all the family that I've got on the other side right now. What a homecoming it's going to be. It makes me homesick for heaven. I can't wait. I can't wait to get there. I don't know about you. There's two older men sitting on a park bench talking. One of them says to the other says, wonder what we'll be doing in heaven. The other one says, I don't know how we're going to feel the time after the day. What do you mean? We won't have nothing to complain about. <laughs> when they get to heaven, you won't have nothing to complain about. Your foot's not going to hurt. Dying, your back's not going to hurt. Everything is going to be just right. Can't you wait to get there? I had the privilege of working on a song that Naomi and the Seagull Brothers recorded. It's just a place to spend the night. Just a place. See, when Jesus finished his three and a half years ministry here, they hung him on a cross. That was just a temporary way to get between here and there. He wasn't looking for an eternal home on this land. He just needed a place to spend the night. So they borrowed a tomb. They didn't need to buy it. They didn't need to rent it. They didn't lease it. He was just going to be there. Just a place to spend the night. Honey, let me tell you, this, this life that we're living in it's just a place Amen. to spend the night. I'm looking for the other side. I'm looking yeah. for what's going to happen. Yeah. 
I'm getting homesick. They say that we're going to have a thousand year marriage supper of the Lamb. Can you imagine? One of our old fashioned homecomings where we had tables, you know, scattered down through the parking lot. I know most of you are not old enough to remember that. But we had used to put tables down through the parking lot. And we called it sing all day singing and dinner on the ground. There you go. Amen. Amen. And there's as food as far as you could see. Makes me homesick. But I don't care what's popular on this world. I used to come to my mom or dad and say, I want to do so and so. And they'd say, no, you can't do that. And my immediate response was, I don't know, why not? Everybody else is doing it. So and so is doing it. They're going. Why can't I go? And his dad's response was, well, son, just because it's okay with them does not mean it's okay with God. Just because the world is doing it does not mean it's okay with God. I got an urgent email from Franklin Graham this week. Everybody knows Franklin Graham? It's a Methodist amen when you do this. <laughs> Franklin Graham sent me a urgent email the new administration has been in office less than 60 days and they are trying to push something called the Equality Act. I don't know if any of you have heard anything about this, but honey, this is, this is, it'll make you sick to read this. It'll make you sick. The things is not about equality at all. It's about giving the gays, the lesbians, free rights. Amen. If your daughter or granddaughter has been out in a sporting event at school and she goes in to take a shower, they want to make it so that anybody can go in and take a shower with her. They want to make sure that the, the restrooms is not male and female, but it's whatever you want to use. If you're interviewing people for a job and a gay or lesbian applies, if you don't hire them, they can sue you because of discrimination. According to Franklin Graham, he says, religious liberty as we know it will cease. Virtually every religious institution from houses of worships to religious schools, if this is passed, will have to fall in line and change their doctrine and their teaching to uphold the lesbians and the gays. Honey, let me tell you something. The Equality Act covers not only homosexuals, but transgender person to expand public accommodations and consumer services to meet their desires. Folks, let me tell you something. This is the stepping stone that's going to take the churches to the level of where the government is warning to stop. We need to be serious about what's going on. I keep telling people that the time is running out. Our time here is so short. Amen. If you was looking at the clock, it'd be 11.59 and 45 seconds. Honey, let me tell you something. The world is changing. The world is coming against everything that has to do with Jesus. If you say Jesus, you're going to be the outcast. 
Folks, are you getting homesick for heaven? Are you prayed up, packed up, paid up? Are you ready to go? The Bible's got several scriptures. Isaiah 5 and 20. Woe unto them that call good evil and evil good. That put darkness for light, light for darkness. They that put bitter for sweet, sweet for bitter. The devil has convinced so many people that it's okay. God loves you. God wants you to be happy. You just do whatever that you want to do. And God's okay with that. I'm going to make a statement here. Robert, right here. I want to make sure you understand what I'm saying. If that is true, you can throw the Bible out the window. If that is true, then God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah for nothing. Honey, you cannot within a million years convince me that God changes his mind. Not in a million years can you ever convince me that God said, okay, I'm going to kill you for doing this, but I'm going to let you live. It's not worked that way. If you go back and read the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, you'll find out that it says, and to this to be an example yep. to the future generations. Honey, let me tell you something. The devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. Yep. He wants to destroy your life. He wants to destroy your family. He wants to take everything from you. But I'm homesick for heaven. Amen. I want to go home. Amen. I've never been there. I don't know why people call it home. Well, I do too. Because I believe that the spirit that's inside of me came right. from where he right. is. That's right. And my spirit is longing. I want to go back. Amen. I want to go home. I want to be there. But folks, just like we're preparing for this up week homecoming, we've made a lot of preparations around here. You're going to have to prepare to go there. You can't get there by accident. You can't be out wandering around and turn on the wrong road and find it. Heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. If you want to make heaven your home, you have to start preparing here. There was one writer said that the reason that this life is so rough is to keep reminding you that you won't be here long. The reason that we have so many problems is to remind you that one day we won't have the problems. Are you ready to go? Are you prepared? Is everything taken care of?